So you want to get into the real estate business, especially in 2023. In 2023? Okay. Well, let's talk about it. If you want to get into this noble profession, let's talk about the things that you need to do before you get started. So watch the video all the way to the end, guys, because I'm going to give you my top five things that you need to do before you get started in the real estate business. And I'm going to give you two bonus tips at the very end. So make sure you like, share, and subscribe. Let's get into it. Hey guys, how you doing? Sasha Chapman here. I'm a real estate coach and I'm the team leader of Chapman Realty Group. I am a three-time EXP icon agent and I am looking forward to talking to you guys real quick about getting in the real estate business. Now, here's the deal. A lot of folks want to jump into real estate, okay? But the question is, what do you need to do before you get started in this business? So let's go ahead and jump right on into it, all right? The first thing I want you guys to do is evaluate your big why. This might not sound like it's big, but it is everything when you get into this business. Let me explain why. You have to have a really big why when you jump into real estate. The reason for that is if you are only doing this for money, that's going to run out. Okay. If your why is shallow and if it's not big enough, you know, when things start to hit the fan and it gets rough out here, people stop working. I've seen it so many times where real estate agents who have been deep in the game, but they only got into it for financial reasons and to make a lot of money. And guess what happens? When the market gets tough, they drop out. We've had a number of agents who just flat out quit the game altogether in 2023. Why? Because it's not that easy to sell anymore. And there has to be something driving you to make you get up and actually work. For example, did your previous career end and you need something that gives you purpose? That's a great why. Do you wanna pay for your baby's college? That's a great why. Are you trying to buy a car? Are you trying to build generational wealth? Okay, something that's going to make you get up in the morning. Something that's going to make you actually work hard for what you're trying to do and achieve your goals. Now, I don't know what your why is, but my whole point is this, guys. Your why has to be big enough that it's going to be bigger than you and make you work when you don't want to work, make you be disciplined within the business, and it's going to make you get up when things are going bad, okay? And money is just simply not enough. So really evaluate your big why and why you want to get in this business, okay? Now, a couple things I'll tell you right now that don't work as a big why. I love showing houses. So watch HGTV. Just watch HGTV. Or, you know, I'm really getting into just to make a lot of money. Those folks don't tend to last long in the, in the industry, unfortunately. Okay? Or individuals who are just completely lost and just looking for some type of purpose, but real estate really isn't that purpose. Okay? Find your why before you start this business. Trust me on that one. Number two, save some money. Okay? It's a lot easier to start this business if you actually have some money. You ever hear the saying, it takes money to make money? Well, that's true. It's very true here in real estate. It does take some money to make some money. Now, it is very true that you can do this without having money and getting started, but it's a heck of a lot easier if you actually have some money in the bank and you can spend some money on resources that you need to generate leads and to get your name out there. So make sure you save some money before you get started here in real estate. It just makes a whole lot of sense to have money in the bank first, okay? Starting without money can be very difficult. Number three, find you a mentor in real estate. I am talking about you need to go ahead and find you a very successful individual that's been doing this quite some time and actually got some sales, right? That have been, that you can see within your community locally that has grown their business, you need to go ahead and research that individual. You need to start asking them questions about how they get started in the real estate business. How do they lead generate? How do they run and operate their business? What does it take for them to be a successful real estate agent? There's nothing like having a great mentor in this business that can help you avoid the landmines of the business and guide you through this so you can be successful. Find you a great mentor that is willing to share their knowledge with you. You will be so happy for that. Number four, research your broker before you join. Okay. This is a big one. I've talked about this in many videos. Okay. Choosing the right broker. You can catch that video up here, guys. But 
Make sure that you truly evaluate your broker before you join. You want to understand, you know, what is their place within the market? Number one, are they respected? Number two, can they actually help you and what tools and resources are they giving you? This is definitely the business. You get what you pay for. So for those who are doing a discount broker and believe that, oh, I'm getting all my money, but yet you don't have the tools and the resources to be successful, you really need to outweigh that. Are you getting the proper training? Are you getting the right resources around your business? Nothing is just for free, guys. Okay, I want to stress that point all the time. I've seen so many agents who decide to go to a discount broker, okay, and get 100% of their commission, yet they have no CRM. Yet they have no training and their contracts or suspect as you know what. Like if you can't write a contract in this business, that is very problematic. So make sure you research your broker. Make sure you understand the training and the resources they're going to be providing for you and that you are joining a winning team out there. Okay. Make sure you understand that environment very much so. And number five, evaluate your attitude and your skill set. This is a big one. This is a really big one within this industry because a lot of folks don't evaluate who they are and what their skill set really truly is. So let me say this. If you are a high-powered executive jumping into a whole different industry, you're not the CEO of anything here. Okay, You are a rookie in real estate. While you do have some good skills that are very much transferable into this industry, I myself came from healthcare, so I understand that. Uh, understand and respect that this industry is a little bit different. And so for those who are used to working a W-2 job and being told what to do, no one's going to tell you what to do. No one's going to tell you what you need to do here in real estate. You need to have the engine to get up and go. So let's talk about your last couple evaluations. You need to actually look at the last couple evaluations that you had for your job. While you agree or disagree with them, You need to understand, is there a theme underlying there that everyone is trying to tell you? Lord knows there was a couple themes that I disagreed with in my evaluations. But guess what? They were on like four or five evaluations. So, yeah, if a lot of people saw it, it was probably there. And so I need to fix those particular things within myself. I've noticed that real estate agents have a tendency to say that, oh, I'm an independent contractor. You can't tell me what to do. It might be the reason why they didn't real estate in the first place, because no one could tell them what to do and they couldn't keep a job. Just saying. If they hurt you, they hit you, evaluate yourself. All right? But this is one of the things that you really need to stop and look deep in. Do you have the soft skills to do this business? Can you build relationships? If you struggle with building relationships, You will struggle with real estate because it is a relationship-driven industry. From your peers to your clients to your vendors, relationships mean everything in this business. So it's a skill set that you need to have and that you need to build upon um, because it just makes things a lot easier. Yes, we've seen people be successful that don't have the best relationship skills, but there's only so far you can go from that perspective. Imagine the greatest realtor out there with great relationship skills. Just saying, okay? Now, let's also look at your actual skill set in the business. Do you know your contract? Okay? Do you know how to talk to buyers and sellers? Can you overcome objections? Right? Do you understand how the real estate process works? Can you literally find solutions to problems that your clients are going through? Because that's a big part of this job is finding solutions and presenting options to individuals that are not sounding so confusing. If you're a one-trick pony in this business, that means you're going to be limited in the things that you can actually do. So I really want you guys to think about that and evaluate your skill set as you decide to get in this business. The great thing about it is this, guys. You can build up on your skill set and you can find a lot of success and you can change who you are. I have evolved so many times in this industry that I'm not even the same realtor as I was six months ago. I continue to evolve and impress upon my skills so I get better and better. It's something that you really need to stop and look at before you get into this business. What are your strengths? What are your weaknesses? And then where's the gap to get that? That's where that mentor comes into place. Truly get a mentor. All right, guys. I told you I going to give you two more bonuses before you jump into business. So write these down. Number one, buy a house. Okay, here's bonus number one. If you're going to be switching over from a W-2 income straight over into a 1099 income as a real estate agent, 
buy a house first if you haven't done so. The reason for that is simple. When you switch over into a 1099 income, they're typically going to see that you have two years in that particular job, just like anyone else, to make sure that you are a safe bet when it comes to buying a home. I was making good money as a real estate agent, but I was also making good money as a healthcare professional. But I did not understand that. And so when I left healthcare code and went straight into real estate, I wanted to buy a home and I had to wait two years to prove myself, even though I was making more money in the real estate business than I was in healthcare. And I was like, what? But nobody told me. And I didn't know. I also didn't have a mentor, so I didn't ask. So there was that, right? Bonus tip number two, get an LLC. Absolutely get an LLC so you can take advantage of all the tax savings that you can have as a real estate agent and you can have some security for yourself. It's not just about the tax benefit, guys. It's also about making sure you're securing your assets from your business away from your personal assets as well. But you definitely want to get that LLC so you can learn the tax game that we have here in real estate and how you can take advantage of that. But these are two big things that no one told me about when I first decided to get in the business. And I wish someone had told me, which is why I'm telling you right now. All right, guys, thanks for watching all the way to the end. These are my top five tips that you need as an individual trying to get in the business before you start. Make sure you go ahead and subscribe to our YouTube channel. If you have not done so yet, be on the lookout for our new podcast that we're going to have starting here up pretty soon. Like, subscribe to our YouTube channel. If you have any questions about getting into business, click on the link down below, schedule a chat session with me, and let's talk about it. You guys take care. Peace.